things of Duke's uh, that I now have here in the museum. Well, the first thing I'm going to show you here now is uh, Duke's parade saddle. Now, I'm told that he rode this in the Rose Bowl parade, and then every year in Eager Springerville, two little towns out in the middle of nowhere in eastern Arizona, he would be the Grand Marshal of the uh, parade over there. And here's these two little dinky towns and John Wayne riding as the Grand Marshal. You guys remember the film Rio Bravo? Well, watch him. I'm going after Duke. You belong in him. I would. Well, here's Stumpy's shotgun. And right down below it is Stumpy's jug. Now we move on over here, and you'll see one of Duke's hats back here. And then, remember the film True Grit, when he says, Fill your hand, you son of a bitch! And he spins his rifle, and then they charge each other, and all the shooting starts, that's it. Now, over here, you'll see his Republic cap that, you know, all the actors in those days of whatever company they were working for would always put on their cap, and it says Republic. Then down just below that is Duke on a fishing trip to Central America. A lot of people don't know that Duke owned a island down off the coast of Panama. This picture here of Duke with the two sailfish that he was so proud of. And if you'll notice, he's got on shorts, and all the women that come in, they say, my goodness, he's got good-looking legs. Any woman would be proud to have those legs. Then, if you look right up here, you'll see one of Duke's pistols. And on the butt of the pistol, you'll see JW branded in it. Then right over from that, you'll see John Wayne cartridge box. Now, you know you've really made it when they put your picture and your name on a cartridge box. But these were the cartridges for this commemorative rifle that is right over here. And you can see right here where it says John Wayne commemorative. And this was given to him by the Winchester Company or Corporation. Right up, you've got a deputy show badge of his. And you have the gold medal that was given to him by the Congress of the United States. Now, Maureen O'Hara and Elizabeth Taylor went before the Congress and got this gold medal for him because up till that time, there was only a handful of non-military type people or presidents that had one of these. Duke became one of them. Next to that is a pair of Duke's uh, chaps, or in Spanish, chapaderos, and uh, they look pretty good size, but they only hit him about where his calves were at because he was such a tall man. Now, right next to that is one is a rieta. Now, rieta is a Mexican rope, and it's braided from uh, rawhide. Now, next to that is a statue that was given to him by the Hopi Indian tribe because of all the good things that he did for the Native Americans. When the movie companies would move in, Duke always shared all the money with them and really got them out of some bad straits. Next to that is the one of his bullwhips. Now, this is a long bullwhip. This one's 12 foot long, quite a bit longer than uh, the ones that you normally see. Then next to that, you're going to see one of Duke's hats. Now this hat, I am told, is the one that was worn in The Cowboys. Now The Cowboys, of course, was a very sad movie because poor old Duke got killed off in the end of it. And he would put on different hat bands, you know, for different movies. This, you can see that how worn it is right there in front where he used to grab the hat. Well, that's it. You've all heard about Red River. Well, Red River was a big film for the Duke. Uh, and here is the buckle, Red River D. Now next to that is a very special pistol. This pistol was one of four pistols that were used in the film The Shootist. Now The Shootist was his last film. In those days, um, the pistols were supplied by 
uh, Duke, one of Duke's friends, had started a company, and this, his friend's name was Audie Murphy. Does anybody remember Audie Murphy? He was the most decorated hero in the uh, uh, Second World War. Well, when they came back from the war, they found out that Colt Arms had quit making the Peacemaker. So they all wondered where they were going to be able to get the Frontier-styled uh, pistols to be used in the films. Well, Audie Murphy went to Spain and Italy and had them made up there, and then he shipped them back to the United States. And so most of the pistols that you, that you saw in the 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s, were by his company, which was called Great Western Firearms. So that's the pistol. One of the pistols out of the shooters. There was four of them. Duke owned them all. Now, two of them are in the Western Hall of Fame in Oklahoma. But here's one of them right here. Now here's a picture that Duke gave me years ago, 1947. I was 16 years old and I was an extra in the old movie, The Angel and the Bad Man. Down in the corner, you can see where it says, thanks, Bill. And then he signed it, Duke. Now he gave, not just to me, he gave these to all the cast and crew. We were just young kids, and that's how we made our money in the summer. We went north to get into the movies. Right down here, you'll see Duke's favorite drink, and that is called Salsa Commemorativara Tequila. And it's a, a very special tequila in that it's the best one that Salsa makes. In those old days, it cost $28 a bottle. I wouldn't even want to think what it would cost today. Then you'll look down here and you'll see this Civil War pistol. This was one of his prized possessions because it's a real Civil War pistol. 1851 was when that was made. And then up here you'll see a pair of Duke's boots. Now, Duke had very small feet for as large a man as he was. Remember, he was six foot four, and if he wore two inch heels, he was six foot around here on this side, you'll see Ward Bond's shotgun. If you remember, Ward Bond was in a lot of his movies, and one of his best friends, and this is Ward Bond's shotgun. Down here are a bunch of his branding irons. Then over here, you'll see the clacker board. You can read on here where it says, the shootest, the director was Siegel. This was scene one, take one, in 1976. Of course, up here above it is the saddle from the shootist. Now, if you look closely, right underneath there, you'll see where it says J.B. Books. Well, J.B. Books was the part that the Duke played in this film. So that's the story of Duke and me and how this collection came to be.